What's up, YouTube? Um, welcome to the Counting Wisdom podcast. Um, I wanted to talk about how godliness and gain are connected in a lot of ways, but I notice how sometimes in my life I can be seeking after gain. You know, how much more money can I make? How much more of a better job can I find? You know, um, how, how big of a, a home can I get? You know, um, and it's in little things too, you know, um, eating more and more, um, trying to get more pleasure, more and more pleasure. These things are drawing us away from God and You know, godliness with contentment, the Bible says, is great gain. But so many times we can, you know, get so caught up in the cares of the world that we start to seek only after gain. We start to seek only after, you know, how can I get more and more? And in some level of our heart, we need to have this contentment and peace that God's going to take care of us. You know, we can get so upset sometimes, even angry, that we don't have something that we want. You know, you don't have a house or you you're in a one bedroom apartment and you want a two bedroom apartment there's so many things that we can try to seek after and basically what i wanted to focus on is you know how can we have a level of trust in god you know, we need to trust that God has our back. God can take care of us. But, you know, so many times we don't read our Bible because we're like, oh, I got to search and find out how I can get this one thing. And we don't pray and tell God what our needs are. And we don't do a lot of things that we should be doing. And, you know, this is not good for us to do. And so, as we pursue our life and we you know want to do things we may want to go and travel you know you may want to go to Israel and you're like oh this is something I want to do you may want a better job you may want you know more things in your life but I think that what we have to separate is being godly for the sake of being godly you know um, following God for the sake of loving God. And I think we have to change our mindset and change our thoughts to follow God for good reasons is what I'm trying to say. Instead of only following God just so we can get something from God. And I think it's hard to do, you know, because maybe we see, oh, God blessed me in this way or he cleaned my life or he got me a job or, you know, I have more money than what I used to have. And, you know, we're like, oh, well, I got to do right, you know, in order to keep this. And I think on some level that is true that, you know, we do have to do right and God will, you know, bless our efforts and, you know, help us. But also, I wanted to make the point that 
you know, we need to also have this contentment within us that, you know, I'm following God because of the goodness of God and the love of God that he shows on shows to me. The Bible says that God loves us. God loved us so much that he gave his only son so that we would not perish. And so, you know, I think a lot of times we can, um, you know, forget. And one of the things that um, the pastor that I volunteer for, he was talking about how, you know, we get so caught up in, you know, the new Jerusalem and heaven and the things of heaven. But we kind of forget that we're going to be dwelling with God and we're going to be living with God. And that's amazing. You know, it's mind blowing. And we're going to see God, you know, the thing that is God is, you know, kind of in our face in this world, but he's also somewhat hidden. He's not necessarily hidden. I believe that if you have faith, you can see that God is around us and God is with us. But also, you know, God is going to be with us in a different way than what he is now. And that's so amazing. And so we shouldn't just be godly to get something, you know, and I have to kind of check myself sometimes like, no, you know, I'm not going to go and, you know, try to get more and more. No, you know, I'm not going to um, seek after righteousness just so I can get more and more. You know, that's not a good idea because we can go after things and things aren't going to really solve our heart problems or our internal problems. They're not going to necessarily give us peace. And yeah, it's good to have, you know, a TV or a car but those things don't necessarily make up who we are and they don't give us life. Jesus is the one that gives us life, you know. Um, and so I think that sometimes we have to take a step back and realize why why should I be getting so upset that I don't get this one thing when in reality... You know, God has given us all things. It's just sometimes it takes patience. You know, it takes patience to get to a better plateau. It sometimes takes patience for the problems of the world to be fixed. You know, the problems of the world may not necessarily be solved overnight. You know, some things... I guess can happen overnight, but there was a planning and there were things that were done before it actually got fixed. You know, the job market, the, the crime rate, you know, those things aren't going to be fixed in just one night. And what we have to do is say, you know, Jesus is going to fix these things and I have to wait on him. And on some level, God is being patient and, you know, allowing some things to be as they are. And so I think we have to also take up that mindset that, you know, this is going to be a fixed, you know, it's not okay how it is, but at the same time, you know, I'm going to allow this to take place. I'm going to allow this to, you know, happen. Even though, in reality, there may be nothing that you can 
do, you know, but I think taking the mindset of, you know, I'm going to allow this to continue until the proper time. And I think we have to remember to keep in mind what the future holds. You know, the Bible says, don't be earthly minded. And I think a lot of material things, a lot of our um, pursuits can sometimes be so focused on this life. You know, oh, I got to provide for my family. Oh, I got to, you know, make sure I'm taken care of and, you know, got to get my hair done. Got to, you know, uh, wear these nice clothes and, you know those things have their place, but they have a small place, you know, a small place that, you know, needs to be centered on God. God needs to be our center. And so when there's a saying, keep the main thing, the main thing, and, you know, that's kind of a saying to say keep God at the center of your life not you know these other things that can draw you away from God you know you get that new job and now you're working you know 50 60 hours and you don't have time for God anymore you know there's an interesting thing that God said about getting riches, you know, I think this is found in the book of Deuteronomy, when, you know, God was saying how, you know, a person can be rich and well fed and, you know, prosperous, and they can say in their heart, you know, who needs God, you know, I don't need God. And that's a dangerous place to be because we do need God. But we can get into this mindset that, oh, you know, I have food, I have clothing, I, you know, have a car, I have a house, you know, and, you know, I have these little one part, these one, these things that make up only one part of real life, you know, real life is found in Christ. But there's a lot of people out there that don't have Christ you know, and they're, they're pursuing pleasure, they're pursuing sin, and it's to their own destruction, and I think, you know, we have to have a level of mercy for them, you know, we have to have a level of pity, you know, there, it's sad, you know, but at the same time, you know, once we have come out of that world, we have to realize that that other world, that sinful lifestyle is trying to draw, draw us back in and destroy us. And, you know, I am, I have a belief of, you know, once saved, always saved in a way. But there are scriptures that do give us warning that you know, certain things are just not okay in the Christian life. And so I believe that we are secure, you know, we're made blameless. We're made holy in God's sight through faith in Jesus. Like it says in the Colossians chapter one, you know, Jesus has qualified us to receive an inheritance. And so one of the things that the Bible says is, work and whatever you do not just your job but whatever you do do all to the glory of God you know and in one place it says that you know work heartily knowing that you know not unto men but unto God knowing that you will receive an inheritance as your reward and so we're getting rewarded you know the Holy Spirit is our guarantee of our inheritance and so you know um, we have things that are coming for us you know good things good rewards you know a treasure in heaven 
But we also have God. You know, one thing that God said to Abraham, he said that he was Abraham's exceedingly great reward. And so we also have God, you know, that we don't fully know all that God is going to do throughout all eternity. You know, that's one of the blessings that, you know, God has revealed things to us. But we're also going to be with God forever. And we don't know all the amazing things that God is going to do. And, you know, we're just getting, you know, a good taste of, you know, we're getting our first meal, so to speak. But there's still many more meals to come. And so, you know, we have to take a step back and say, you know, God's going to provide for me. You know, I'm in the will of God. God's going to provide all of, you know, my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And once we know that, you know, we can take a step back and say, you know what? Why am I pursuing all this? Why am I on the rat race? You know, trying to, you know, make a luxurious life for myself here on earth, trying to bring heaven down on earth without Jesus. And that's what the world is doing. They're trying to make heaven without God, you know, and we're going to discover how great God is even more, even though we already know how great God is. But we're going to discover even more in his presence that he's amazing. So, um, thanks so much for checking out this uh, uh, podcast, you know, and um, I will talk to you on the next podcast. You can also check out my website, washi.com. W-A-S-H-Y-E dot com for more Bible-based content and more of my blog. So, um, thank you so much, and I will talk to you on the next podcast. See ya.